Hey, welcome back all you beautiful and creative people. Wild coming at you and today we're gonna do something kind of a little bit different. My friend Anna's gonna show you how to make the perfect candle for your home or if you're like me, for your art studio that's just gonna make it smell wonderful and help you be creative. So here we go, Anna, take it away. Hey everyone, my name is Anna. Thank you Wild for that awesome introduction and today I wanted to show you guys how to make a very simple soy candle in your very own home. We're going to be using just a few simple ingredients and we're going to be actually using the Beach Daisies scent. It's very light, floral, and very reminiscent of just a very simple daisy. All right, so let me show you how to make this candle. First step is to get yourself a really high quality soy wax. I use Cargill C3. It's a nice, simple, 100% soy wax. It comes in a flake form and it's very easy to work with. So the next step is to get yourself a nice uh, melting pitcher or pouring pitcher. So you're gonna wanna put it on a scale. K kitchen scale is just fine. Open up your wax, scoop your flakes directly into the pouring pitcher until you reach one pound or 16 ounces. And our next step is to set up a double boiler in order to be able to melt our wax, as you can see here. If you don't know what a double boiler is, it's very simple. You just get a pot, fill it about a third of the way with some water, set it to boil. Once your water is at a low boil, take the pitcher with your wax flakes in it and gently place it into the boiler. A great question that I always get asked is if you have to fiddle around with the wax while it's melting. And the answer is no. Take this opportunity to prep your tins with your wicks so that they are ready to go when your wax is ready to pour. Today, I'm using an eight ounce tin made specifically for candle making, and it simply comes with a pull off lid. The wick we're using today is a cotton core wick. It's braided, it's an HTP 105, and it comes pre-tabbed, so you don't have to do anything to it. And we're also going to be using candle wick stickers. They simply go on the bottom of the tab to stick it to the tin, so it doesn't go anywhere. So in order to prep our tins, what we're going to do is take a wick sticker, take it off, place it onto the wick tab, open up your tin and place it directly or as best you can in the center of the tin so that the candle will burn nice and evenly. It's really hard to get it in the center, just eyeball it, it's perfectly fine. So a pro tip is if you don't get your wick exactly centered in the middle of your tin, you can use something called a, a wick centerer. I have one right here. These are fancy, but basically you just slide them on and it's very easy for you to adjust the wick while the wax is still wet. If you don't have a wick centerer or you don't want to invest in them, you can simply get two popsicle sticks, place your wick in the center, and then hold the wick up using the two sticks. After you're done prepping your tins, you're going to want to get something to protect your countertops with when you pour your wax. I use butcher paper. You can use newspaper, old magazines, even paper towels, it doesn't matter. But you just want to get something that's going to protect your surfaces from the wax. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get some sort of wire rack. I just have a cookie cooling rack right here. You can get it in the baking aisle. You wanna place it right on top of your butcher paper and then place your tins right on top, ready to pour your wax. Once your wax is all melted, you're going to want to check the temperature. We're looking for about 200 degrees Fahrenheit here. You can use a couple of different methods. I have a candy thermometer. These are super simple to find. They're very cheap. Once you put it in wax, don't use it for candy anymore. If you want to invest in a digital thermometer, you can get one on Amazon. I have both. They are both very accurate. Your choice. Once your wax has reached 200 degrees Fahrenheit, go ahead and turn the double boiler off. We're going to take the wax out of the double boiler and we're going to let it rest. We want it to cool to about 185 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, we would normally measure our fragrance oil, but since we're doing a very simple candle, we're using one pound of wax to one ounce of fragrance oil and I have a one ounce bottle ready to go, so no measuring required. This will result in three perfectly balanced and fragranced candles. 
C3 wax is very temperamental, so you're going to want to introduce the fragrance oil very slowly. Get yourself a nice wide spatula. Stir very slowly for 15 to 30 seconds until you see that the fragrance oil has disappeared and incorporated nicely into the wax. So our pouring temperature for this wax is between 125 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna wanna let your wax sit until you check it with a thermometer. I have a digital thermometer here. We're at 126.5, so that is the perfect pouring temperature. Again, this wax is very temperamental, so when we do our pouring, we're going to want to pour very slowly, and we're only going to fill it to this inner lip here. So we're gonna take our wax, make sure you move your empty tins out of the way so you're able to have a nice clean pour. Get a nice, even pour going. We wanna to try to reduce the amount of air bubbles that are introduced, and just pour until you get to that first lip and then stop. Once we're done, you wanna set that aside and do one final check to make sure that your wicks are centered. Just eyeball it. Make sure that your tins are evenly spaced out so that they get nice airflow in between and you get even cooling. And you wanna leave these to completely cool. They're going to become white and opaque and it should take anywhere between two and three hours you wanna let these sit overnight before you take the wick centerers off so that the wax is nice and set and you don't disturb the wax when you take this off and move the wick. After we're done pouring the wax, give ample time for it to cool down. During the cooling process, you may notice some air bubbles develop. Those are perfectly fine. They will not affect the burn whatsoever. But if they really bother you, you can do one of two things. If you have a wooden skewer, you can gently poke at the air bubbles to release the air while it's cooling, or you can wait until it's all done and hit it with a heat gun to melt all the bubbles. Once your candle has completely cooled, you're going to want to trim off the excess wick. You can use one of two things. I have a fancy pair of wick trimmers. You do not have to get that fancy. You can simply use a pair of scissors. You're going to want to trim it down to about a quarter of an inch of wick left, and you'll be all good to go. And now you have a perfect summer candle to burn in your home that's very light, aromatic, and a hint of floral. It will remind you of a perfect beach day. I really hope you enjoyed learning how to make a candle with me today. I love sharing how to make things with people. So if you liked this video and you want to see more from me, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'm really sorry if there were some awkward moments. This is my very first time doing it but hopefully you'll want to see more and I'll get better as I make them. I also want to say thank you to Wild for letting me come onto his channel and share something awesome with you guys. So take care and I will see you next time. Bye.